I just got back from the most amazing, beautiful, magical trip of a lifetime to Bali. Yes, Bali, the one with the jungle and the monkeys and the beautiful water. That's the Bali that we put on our mood board because I put it on my mood board. I don't know about you, but I got to meet my boyfriend and we got to go for completely free. Yes, I said free, but it may not be the free that you're thinking of. So let's rewind. It all started when I got my real estate license, found a brokerage that had a travel incentive for top sales for the year. I joined this brokerage in June, so that meant I had six months to sell as many houses as I could so I could win the trip for the year. Six months before I even thought about this brokerage or even getting my real estate license, I put Bali on my vision board for the year. So it hit me like this was the sign from the universe that I had an opportunity to go to Bali for free. So you bet your ass, I sold as many houses as I could in the next six months so I could win this trip. Fast forward a year and a quarter life crisis later, this trip was so needed and it could not have come at a more perfect time. Need to eat, pray, love the shit out of this trip because your girl's going through a midlife crisis. And the day finally came for the big long haul to fly to Bali. We flew 13 hours to Taipei, Taiwan for a five hour layover. They had the best food at an airport I've ever seen. And then after another five hour flight, we finally arrived in... After 25 hours of travel, we finally checked into our villa in the evening and it was so sweet. They welcomed us with the most amazing ginger tea and the most beautiful cut fruit. And again, we had just traveled for 25 hours. So after our amazing nasi goreng dinner and a few other dishes, we literally just went to bed. Good morning from the villa. This is the beautiful Nagshampa Villa. It's about 30 minutes north of Ubud City in a little village named Taro. It houses about 16 guests and there was only four of us, so we were living it up. And the villa is fully staffed with the sweetest humans that can literally make anything you need come true. They have an espresso, literally a whole espresso machine here. So let's see if I still got my skills, you know? <laughs> breakfast and now we are headed out to Ubud around the city gonna go see some animals I want to go ride some elephants in Bali I'm not gonna lie I was a little hesitant to share this in this video because I'm a little embarrassed to be completely honest because I feel so naive now but there's also so much information on the internet so I never know what's right and wrong sometimes anymore even before the trip, I was hesitant. I even called a friend and was like, hey, isn't elephant riding canceled? Is it not okay anymore? I really don't know, but isn't there also elephant sanctuaries? So even with that reluctance, I went into it with an open mind because this is a totally different country and I just don't know. I'm from America. I don't know what they're up to there. They could be doing it totally different, you know? Anyway, I went to the Safari Elephant Park in Bali and all the information that they were showing, you know, I ate that shit up. I ate it up, okay? The people in Bali say it makes them happy. I don't know if that's just a marketing tactic. It probably is, but do what you will with this information. My gut was telling me that we should not have ridden these elephants. You see that guy? That is a luwak. And for today's activity, we are gonna drink coffee made from this guy's poop. Okay, I promise it sounds a lot worse than it actually is. Luwak coffee here in Bali is actually a delicacy. I learned on this trip that actually not a lot of locals drink this because it's so expensive. And yes, although this coffee may start from an animal's feces, the Balinese people have created a thorough process to create this beautiful coffee. At Bali Polina, they walked us through all of the phases of Luwak coffee all the way down to roasting the beans to serving them. We got to experience the old methods and of course the new. Honestly, if you never told me where this coffee was sourced, I wouldn't have known. It tasted like great coffee to me. We just got done with our 
couples massage and I feel amazing. <laughs> One of the most beautiful things I learned on this trip was the art and practice of gratitude that the Balinese people implement in their lives every day. We had an amazing opportunity to do a cooking class at Jetting Bali in their family home. And before we started cooking, we learned how to make offerings. The Balinese people make offerings every single day for the jungle, the gods, for everything around them. Taking a moment and some time every day to create something so beautiful, so meticulously crafted to practice gratitude every single day is something we all should do. Although I don't have flowers and beautiful banana leaves to do this every day, I think that we all can just be grateful every single morning before we start our day. Once we were finished, we got to set our intentions and pray a little bit before starting to cook. Uh, before cooking, I want to introduce and explain to you about the ingredient. What is for cooking class this morning? Explain something. the day together in Ubud city shopping around and hitting a bunch of new spots but the real star of the show was our driver Mate. of course as our driver he took us everywhere but he had the best recommendations for literally anything food places to see places to stop and check out and he seriously just was the sweetest person ever it's rainy season here in bali so sheets of rain is not unusual that didn't stop us though. Mate took us to the infamous Rice Terrace and drove us to a couple spots actually until we find a good spot to stop and just check it out really quick. After that, we went to the sacred monkey forest. <laughs> we got a voucher to take a picture with one of the monkeys. Not scared at all. Okay, so I was kind of scared because these dudes are big. Like these are dead ass wild monkeys and one just hopped on my lap to take a picture with us. It was pretty cool, but still, these are wild monkeys.
next morning in Bali, we got to catch a sunrise at Mount Bator. This was an absolutely perfect morning and a perfect way to end this trip. The way the fog filled the crater of the volcano and how perfectly still nature was from up here was absolutely magnificent. last time since I was a child that I was saddened to leave a place. I found peace and stillness in Bali and I truly left my heart there. To our wonderful staff at Nagshampa Villa, they made our stay so warm, welcoming, and magical in Bali. There's so much more to do, see, people to meet, and more to experience in Bali and I can't wait for my next adventure.